there is a problem with the way that we are taught history. What happens when the struggle for social, cultural, and political equity is understood only individually rather than collectively? Or in short, what happens when our history becomes hero worship? The myth of history is the individual. In our history classes, our social studies classes, we are taught the exploits of individuals. Scholars such as Banks and Macintosh have called this the heroes and holidays approach to teaching history. For example, in Texas, students are taught that it was a few senators who had fought to pass suffrage rights for women in the early part of the 20th century. While it was true that in order to get the vote for women, senators had to pass the amendment, this version of history, though, negates the nearly 100-year struggle of countless women and women's groups to the call for suffrage. It was their action that forced the hand of Congress. Another example is Abraham Lincoln. Yes, he signed the Emancipation Proclamation, which is what we often learn ended slavery in this country. But this was only one piece of a much longer, much wider struggle. Lincoln said that if he could have ended the Civil War without freeing slaves, he would have. But we know that enslaved people fleeing to the North put political pressure on Congress and economic pressure on the South. Because of this first true Great Migration, enslaved peoples made it impossible for the North to not end slavery. These are collective actions on the part of women and on the part of enslaved people and abolitionists that led to change. So while it is true that history is made up of individuals struggling, the struggle to transform or maintain a system that benefits everyone is a collective struggle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Our stories follow a similar pattern. They are easier to follow if we know whom to watch, but this is problematic. Following just one person's extraordinary actions discounts or obscures the actions of others. There are some that argue this brand of storytelling inspires our own heroes, people willing to step in and take extraordinary action. That's great, but it is incomplete. History requires nuance, and this version of history lacks that. Why is nuance important? Why is it important to see history in a collective sense? Timothy Snyder says there are two pits in our current understanding of history. The politics of inevitability and the politics of eternity. First, the politics of inevitability is the belief that history would only progress toward liberal democracy. This myth of the individual history leads to the politics of ine inevitability by assuming that we naturally learn from our mistakes as humans and that heroes will always step in to take back control in times of strife. As Snyder says, the politics of inevitability is a self-induced intellectual coma. But I think it is also important to note that the way we learn history, the way we consume history, leads us to the politics of inevitability like one end of a snake consuming its own tail. This cycle perpetuates itself. Snyder also said that if the politics of inevitability is a coma, the politics of eternity is like hypnosis, always looking back at a mythologized past with disdain for the present and never really looking to the future. In this case, our Heroes and Holidays version of history creates a belief that either the demagogue is the hero or that the hero will come to stop the demagogue. It creates ahistorical representations of the past and misrepresentations of the collective. But it also fails because this version of understanding history leads us to believe that history repeats itself forever. But this is a myth as well. Remember, history instructs, but only if we let it. So what is there to do? Remember that history is made by each of us and every day. We make up history. So when someone tells you the lore of the individual, seek those whom you don't hear about. Ask yourselves and your teachers, who else, whose voice isn't included here? Who is missing from this narrative? And an extension of that might include being more thorough. It is important to gather as much information as possible. You might find that it wasn't Ray alone that brought down the First Order, or Luke for the Empire. There were legions of people dedicated to a cause behind them, people who made the task possible. It's not just the generals or the leaders, it's the people you don't hear about that bring about change. Snyder says at the end of the book, 
the only thing that stands between the politics of inevitability and the politics of eternity is history itself. History allows us to see patterns and make judgments. It sketches for us the structures within which we can seek freedom. It reveals moments, each one of them different, none entirely unique. To understand one moment is to see the possibility of being the co-creator of another. History permits us to be responsible, not for everything, but for something. And in short, history binds us together, creating a collective. There are some really interesting resources to look at, different ways of viewing and receiving history, like Howard Zinn's A People's History of the United States and James Lowen's Lies My Teacher Told Me. These are especially interesting because of their focus on collective history and understanding the myths of history taught to us in many social studies classrooms around the world. Thanks for stopping by. Be sure to hit that like button and, and subscribe for more content like this. Uh, this is the last Politics of Star Wars video, uh, unless I come up with something different later. But I think our next one's gonna be on satire and how we understand the world through literature and TV and even our games. And remember, you have the power to create your own story. So get to it.